Uh, hello guys today we are going to discuss basic principles regarding enfranchisement in previous two lectures we discuss what are elections and then what are electorates and then we discuss that how electorates are grouped together or how what is the criteria for enfranchising the broadly speaking there were two different criteria or two different types of enfranchisement that were the adult franchisement or adult franchise and the restricted franchise today we are going to discuss some basic principles regarding making enfranchisement that is uh, either you are going to adopt a adult franchise or a restricted franchise then if you are doing some sort of restricted franchise then what parameters uh, the people are using to make restricted franchise first one is the age requirement that is minimum age is required to entitle somebody to have the right uh, right to vote uh, that uh, age requirement varies from one country to another country generally speaking it varies from 16 to 21 years of age uh, if you will see in pakistan uh, in pakistan in your own country that's the 18 years of age uh, that is uh, if anybody in pakistan uh, become at least 18 years of 18 years old he is given the right to vote and this age requirement varies from one country to another country and this must be it's a good criteria because uh, the people below certain age are just babies and they are not mature enough to decide anything so age requirement is a good uh, tool for restricting enfranchisement and this must be and it is the women's suffrage if uh, either woman should be given the right to vote or not that's a, a debatable topic uh, we will see some uh, arguments in favor as well as in against the people who spoke against uh, the women's right to vote uh, say that the women are incapable of participation in political affairs so they must not have the right to vote they say that the women don't have that much mentality or that ability to understand the political issues this is something the people who spoke against women's suffrage put their point uh, it's not my personal point and the second one is that they say that uh, since women are usually confined to home and they are rendering family uh, services and they don't have time to think about politics since they are they have to handle number of uh, things at home like um, house care child care and such things so that's why they say that they don't have time to think for politics other there are certain religious restrictions as well for example the catholic uh, church uh, was totally against the women's suffrage as well as some muslim cultures also restrict women's suffrage and another well-known political uh, philosopher and thinker herman feiner in his uh, well-known book theory and practice of modern government says that uh, women's suffrage increase the increase uh, the worthless votes because he said that since women are incapable of participation in political uh, activities and they don't have time to think for politics so that's why they don't have understanding of politics and see if uh, if there is a house and there are six family members two are men and four are women since though they don't have the capability and they don't have time to for politics so they don't have understanding of politics and what they do is they they vote to a person whom the male members of that family are voting so, so what this will do is that they will increase the worthless votes this was something finer said and now in favor uh, if you uh, restrict women from voting that it means that you are making them second class citizens which is not true or which is not fair right since men and women are equal and they must not be uh, one sex must not be discriminated on the basis of his sexual or his biological composition and if you are doing so it means that you are making one sex discriminated or second class citizen which is not fair and the protection of women rights is a it's a really a challenging issue it's not only in third world but it's in first world as well uh, protection of women rights then how you would protect the women rights obviously if you want to protect the women rights you have to uh, understand their issues first and it is the women class which know their issues well 
and if you don't give them right to vote it means you you will not understand their issue and then how you will protect them and the third one is the law should not discriminate anyone if you are discriminating women and if you are not giving them right to vote it means uh, the law is discriminating one's uh, gender so uh, that law will not be considered a good law because uh, while uh, studying law uh, I told you that a best law is the one which will not discriminate any uh, discriminate any uh, uh, it, it will not dis uh, be based on discriminations right and if you are restricting women's suffrage then you and then your law discriminate a, a, a specific gender and which should not be and for moral point of view as well both men and women though are biologically different but they have the same right since they both are human beings and if you are giving the right to vote uh, to a man women must also have that right and to develop a healthy trend in politics women should be allowed to vote now the third discrimination is the citizenship right to have the right to vote in any state you must be the citizen of that state and it must be it's, it's a good criteria because uh, your vote is not just a single piece of paper it's not just a ballot paper it is the will that you are using to formulate a policy and if somebody is not the citizen of a country uh, his will will not be suitable for that policy it means that is somebody else will rule that area right so citizenship right must be and then residential requirement that is you must be residing in a specific constituency for a specific time period so that you should be eligible to vote in that constituency it's because the first a, a, a prominent reason for that is that when you are going to a polling station the polling agents who are living there or, or who are doing their duty there must be able to recognize you so that the chances of box voting could be minimized and the ownership of property this was a criteria used in past for example in 1918 and british uh, the law was passed that uh, the property owners will be given an extra vote same was the case in France as well uh, when the election system was or the elected democracy was started the owners of property were given the chance of vote because it was considered that the people who are the owners of property will be patriotic to that state because their income is there or their assets are there so in this way the ownership of property was a criteria used in past and this must not be and now it's not the case but and it must not be because state should make laws for all and state should work for the economic discrimination if you allow the people to vote on the basis of property ownership it means that you are propagating or you are promoting the economic discrimination which is not fair and there are a number of other conditions as well the first one is the under representative reform act of 1918 additional vote was given to university graduates that is if you are graduated from university you will be given an extra vote you will have the right to vote, cast two votes right this was again not a fair decision because while formulating this law at that time the legislators were saying that since the university graduates have a better understanding of political uh, affairs so uh, giving them an extra vote is a, a suitable decision but this is not true because there are a number of people who are not graduates from university or they are not university graduates but they have the understanding of politics so they must be given chance to vote and the equality must be done and next is that after socialist revolution if you remember in 1917 in russia they disfranchised religious elite and those people who were dependent on labors right so these two categories the religious elites and the dependent on labors were disfranchised in 1917 and in some states military personals were deprived of voting and hitler disfranchised jews and in south africa uh, during the colonial rule 
the local people, the native people were not allowed to vote. So uh, the natives were not given the, uh, the right to vote in, uh, during colonial rule in South Africa. So these were the parameters used in past and some of the parameters are currently used as well. What do you think? They are good or not? Not all of them are good, but not all of them are bad as well. For example, citizenship right, it's a good criteria and it must be residential requirement, it's a good criteria and it must be a minimum age requirement, it's a good criteria and it must be. But women's suffrage should be given. Ownership of property, it was not a good parameter and it must not be. And the other conditions, for example, university graduates, extra vote, that's not a good and the other things as well right uh, i hope you guys enjoy this clip uh, please do not forget to subscribe and press bell icon and forward this video to other friends as well guys we are making nowadays lectures for ba program who are appearing from different universities in pakistan to uh, who and who are who have the subject of political science so basically these lectures are for those students but since these are general topics and those friends who are not students of social sciences or political science and uh, it's beneficial for them as well and thank you for joining please put your suggestions thank you take care goodbye